Okay, I'm here again with Vlad to the Bone, Casey Scheinvold, and Ross the Boss. Guys, it is time to discuss defenses and kickers for Fantasy Football 2021. Casey, we've assigned you the role of picking the top 10 defenses and special teams for the year. Okay, well, thank you. Um, defenses are, are a little unique in picking them because a lot of times they're schedule dependent and you can be uh, you can use a lot of streamer teams for defenses week to week, but I'm going to give you the ten who I think are going to be the most consistent week in and week out. And number one is Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is always effective defensively. They have one of the best sack artists in the nation in T.J. Watt. They have a great secondary. They can pressure the quarterback. They can they can intercept the ball. Uh, number two is the Ravens. They're kind of like. Pittsburgh 2.0. They're the, they're a similar defense. It's run the similar style of aggressive uh, attacking the ball, attacking the quarterback. So they're going to be really effective. The Bucks last year, the Buccaneers proved that their defense is legit too. And on their path to the Super Bowl, well, they haven't lost anybody from that defense. And so they're going to be good again next year. Uh, the Washington football team yet to be determined the name. Hopefully we'll know next year. I'll be able to say what the mascot is. They're one of those underrated teams. People see them as a rebuilding team, but their defense last year was, was phenomenal and finished in the top 10 in the league in defense. So they're always good. The 49ers are the same way. They're another really good defense. I'm not going to say too much about these. I just want to get those names out there for everybody. The Colts uh, have great dynamic linebackers and a D line that can pressure the quarterback. They can play all over the field. They're very hard to run against Buffalo. Not only are they a good defense, but they play in that cold, that cold environment, the second half of the season. And it's hard to do anything there. Uh, they have a team that possesses the ball well on offense and their defense can control the, the game pretty well. I'm never going to bet against a bill Belichick defense. Uh, he always seems to figure out a way to make their defense effective. Uh, he may have a hiccup there here and there, but his defense is always solid. So new, new England, I have at number nine. I mean, at number eight, I'm sorry. And then I have New Orleans at number nine. Uh, New Orleans was a really good defense last year. Sean Payton is known as an offensive coach, but if you look at their stats the past two to three years, their defense have been, has been really, really impressive. And number 10 uh, is my hometown team, the New York Giants. Joe Judge has gotten the Giants playing some really good defense. They've improved their secondary a little bit more. Their, their defensive tackles have been really good. If they can pressure the quarterback a little bit better in, the, in, in this year, I think you're going to see them take a step up defensively to that top echelon of teams. Ross, any sleepers to add here? I mean, you missed a top five defense. I mean, the LA Rams – with Ramsey and Donald, I mean, they have the best defensive player in the league, in the league, and that's voted. And Ramsey's probably one of the best DBs in the league, and that defense should get the respect, Casey Scheinfeld, which you missed, which makes me mad because no one respects the Lambs more than me. I don't. I love I, the I, Lambs. I, don't, I love Lamb. That's with what a, it sounded like. Did you say the Lambs? I said Lambs. Lamb I did it on purpose. You know, lamb call, when, when, the Rams, when the Rams lose in LA, everybody calls them the Lambs. Them it's the a lambs. ongoing okay. joke. You guys don't get it because you guys don't live here in Los Angeles like Ross the Boss. Another defense that I like this year too are the Miami Dolphins. Last year, they showed a lot of promise. They got a year older. They got stronger. They got faster. They added from the draft. Dolphins going to be really, really good in defense this year. Watch out. Okay, I'm going to say another thing that I'm probably going to regret because I'm talking a lot about the Browns, but the Cleveland defense has a lot of playmakers. And they added Jadavion Clowney this year. Oh, They added some great players in the oh, draft. Oh, Miles Garrett is – I love Miles Garrett. That's a great so call. It's it's not oh. – it, it would be good to have – if you don't have an elite defense, which I do not even recommend trying to go for because it's a scramble every year, get two great defenses if you have room on your bench. Cleveland would be a great team to mix in there. Okay, we're going to move to kickers. I was assigned the task of kickers, which is kind of hilarious to me because I always wish the kickers would just be banned from the game. But I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. I, I, I ranked the best kickers I could. Here they are. Number one, Justin Tucker. This guy's automatic. I believe he didn't even miss a single field goal last year. So, uh, and he plays for a great team. When I'm evaluating kickers, I want a team that's always playing downhill as often as possible. I don't want teams that could be in a game where they're going to get shut out and I get nothing from my kicker. That'll never happen with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, I have Greg Zuerlein as my second pick, and it's because Dak Prescott's coming back. The, the Cowboys are going to be in some huge games. Harrison Butker, another guy on a great team. Obviously, the Kansas City Chiefs are going to put up a lot of points. They're going to score a lot of touchdowns, and he'll get extra points. But he'll get his field goals, too. Jason Myers on Seattle in a great offense also. He was great last year. 
Now, here's a guy who's not in necessarily the, the best offense, but Jason Sanders has quite a leg, and he was the number one kicker in, in football last year. I don't put a lot of stock in that because it's highly variable, but he is a good kicker on a good team that has a good defense. That's a key. Tyler Bass in Buffalo I have at number six. I've got Ryan Suckup of Tampa Bay. Then I've got our favorite kicker, Matt Prater from Arizona. We interviewed him ourselves. He's a great guy. He's also a great kicker, but he's also on a great team, and he kicks in warm weather. As the season goes forward, that's going to be key. Michael Badgley, uh, I put him down as San Diego. I did it. We keep doing it. I'm just going to honor San Diego here. But anyways, the L.A. Chargers, Michael Badgley has uh, my number nine pick, and Rodrigo Blankenship of the Indianapolis Colts rounds out my top ten. Guys, anyone that I missed on the I mean, you missed, all the, you missed the number two point leader. In, in in kickers you miss my man Koo, who pitches who picks for Atlanta who I love who who had a great season last year I missed him on purpose so I'll tell you of why, course because I don't know why but because he wasn't born in America is that why that is absolutely not I'm why. teasing I'm teasing that's a joke everybody I'm teasing, I'm teasing. Um, I'm just trying to call controversy but the other one that I like too which um he plays for New Orleans. I like Lutz a lot. I think Winston's going to we, – we didn't talk about Winston that much, but I feel that New Orleans is going to have a good offensive t- game this year with, with Kamari and with, with, with their weapons and, and everything else, and I just feel that Lutz is always out there kicking field goals. So those two kickers I feel I like, but there's a lot of great kickers out there. Casey, who do you like? You know, I got to be honest. I don't. I don't put enough research into kickers to actually yeah. rank them. I'm. I'm more of a, a a draft one in the last pick of the draft, and then play streamers You're week smart. to week. So That's smart. It's hard for me. I look at matchups and and recent performance with who's available on the waiver wire. I'm not arguing. There's no argument here at all. Here's the other thing. I like to attach my my kickers to elite quarterbacks because they're gonna put up numbers. And so eight of my top ten kickers are attached to elite quarterbacks. You know, Rodrigo Blankenship and Jason Sanders are are such good kickers that I felt like they could sneak in. I feel like with Ku, I didn't go with him because I think Matt Ryan is fading and Julio Jones is gone. So, you know, I let me Let me ask you the other thing. Not having an elite quarterback there, doesn't it help you? Like, okay, they can't get into the end zone. So, oh my God, another field goal. I mean, don't you think that that's a plus sometimes? Or you, or for you, you just want an elite quarterback. That's listen. I would ra- I'd rather have a guy who I know is going to get me into the red zone, okay, than a guy who can definitely score the touchdown. Understood. Or not. Understood. Just, you know, it's okay. if you're not moving the ball at all, you can put up that goose egg, and that can kill you in a given week. Okay. All right, guys, let us know what we missed. We love to hear from you. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. Hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below. And we will get back to you personally. We love a good fantasy football argument. Thank you for watching.